have a mark or growth on your body that you're concerned about that might be cancerous? In this video, I will talk to you about when a mole is worrying and when you should check it out, how to tell if it's something that you should be concerned about and when you should leave it alone. How do you tell if a mole is cancerous? A very easy acronym to remember at the back of your hand is the ABCDE system. A, what does A stand for? A stands for asymmetry. If a mole or a pigmented lesion is not nice and round and symmetrical, it sort of looks unequal on both halves, then that is asymmetry. That's something that you should pay attention to. And B stands for borders. What do borders mean? It means that if you look at the edges of the mole, if it's smooth, it's likely to be okay. If it's more irregular, the borders are pushing, I will be concerned about that change. C stands for colours. So colour variation, which means that if you look at the pigmentation and there is uneven pigment, it could be dark in one segment, very light brown in another, slightly red in the central bit, then that is colour variation, which we're more concerned about. What does D stand for? D stands for diameter. Now, typically, diameter is defined as more than 5 or more than 6 millimeters being of concern. Finally, E, E is evolution. I like to use this most because it shows a portent's change. So if the mole is changing, it is active, which means over a period of weeks to months, you see colour change, you see the borders becoming irregular, you start to see symptoms like it's scabbing a little, it's becoming a little bit red and inflamed, it's bothering because it's painful, it's itchy, I would absolutely pay attention to that. So E is the most important feature of them all, which is evolution. What are the three most common types of skin cancer? So firstly, we'll talk about basal cell carcinoma, which is the most common skin cancer, what is classified as a non-melanoma skin cancer globally. Secondly, we talk about squamous cell carcinoma, which is again another non-melanoma skin cancer, which is also very common. And lastly, we talk about melanoma, which is the most dangerous form among the three mentioned. There's the greatest risk of metastasis as well as mortality risk. What are the different signs and symptoms of skin cancer? When should I be worried? If you have a new growth or spot on any part of your skin, and it can be from the face to the trunk to the limbs, and it shows signs or symptoms like scabbing. So it's scaling, it is not healing, it seems to not go away, and it sort of looks sore, maybe painful at the same time, I will be concerned about that. I will also be concerned if it causes spontaneous bleeding which means that if you don't touch it or traumatise it, but it spontaneously breaks down and oozes or bleeds, that is a worrying symptom as well. The other thing would be the duration it's been there on your skin. For example, if it's been there maybe just a week, I will monitor that. Sometimes on the face, it could be something inflammatory like a zit, and that bump may slowly flatten down over time. But if it's a growth that's been slowly getting bigger, for two months to three months and persistently doesn't go away and only enlarges in size and starts to become symptomatic, I would have this checked out. How do we treat or how do we differentiate skin cancers and how do we diagnose skin cancers? I'll start first by talking about how do we diagnose skin cancers. So if you have something of concern, it, it is a growth, it is a spot you're not certain about, I think the first step you can do is at least to seek help with a general practitioner. So go to your family doctor and ask them whether that is of concern, have them evaluate that, and if they feel that's of concern, have them refer you to see a skin specialist or a dermatologist. Seeing one that has expertise in skin cancers will be helpful because that can help you shorten the whole process as well. Have that evaluated and if they think it is likely suspicious for malignancy, they would then recommend to have it biopsy. Of course, getting a history is very important. So the duration, the growth has been there, any background risk factors like previous history of skin cancers, family history of skin cancers, UV exposure, etc. Usually, it is an incisional biopsy or an excisional biopsy. And it depends on the type of skin cancer we're concerned about. So in non-melanoma skin cancer, i.e. we're talking about basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma, I usually typically will do an incisional biopsy, which means I just need a piece of tissue from a part of the growth and send it for histological examination. 
What are the two main methods for incisional biopsies? We can consider a shave biopsy or a punch biopsy. One requires stitching, one doesn't require stitching. So sometimes if it's a growth or a bump on the nose that's quite small and the patient wants it out anyway, I might choose to do a simple scrape or what we call a shave biopsy where the bulk of the growth out of the skin is removed and sent to the lab for examination. On the other hand, sometimes I might want to do a punch biopsy. This is a core biopsy method where we take an instrument and we core down into the skin and then we put a couple of stitches back in. And that can range from a 3mm punch biopsy, 4mm to 5mm depending on how much you want to sample. Now, when do I do an excisional biopsy? That usually comes when I'm evaluating moles that are suspicious. Usually when we're trying to evaluate mole or melanoma spectrum, it is better to excise all of the mole for proper examination. Depending on the type of malignancy and the depth of it, we can have options ranging from non-surgical to surgical options. Non-surgical options include certain things like chemotherapy creams, which can be deployed if the patient wants to avoid surgery and it's a very early stage of non-melanoma skin cancer we're treating. When it's less invasive methods that are being employed, the five-year clearance rate might be lower than that of a surgical option, so it will not be the gold standard recommendation. So we're going to talk about the two main options here, a standard white local excision and most micrographic surgery. And there are differences between these two main surgical options. What is a white excision? Now, if you choose to do a white excision for non-melanoma skin cancer, largely BCCs and SCCs, what you'll be doing is to go for the clinical margin of the lesion, demarcate that, and the surgeon, or like myself, will usually take 4 millimeters all around and take that out as the first tumour removal stage because that gives us 95% clearance rate. You do have to understand that the visible tumour is not all you see. By using a white excision, there is sometimes a risk that it may not completely clear with this surgery. Hence, sometimes, rarely, we have patients sort of doing or electing white excision, may be done by a dermatologist, by another surgeon, and it may come back in complete margin clearance. And that's when our most micrographic surgery is usually used as salvage surgery to clear the tumour the second time round. What is most micrographic surgery? Most surgery is basically a technique where we do on table, frozen section, margin control. So the same tumour we're talking about here, instead of taking an empirical 4 to 5 millimetre margin, we take a very tight 1 millimetre margin all around, around the radius and below the tumour, almost sitting like a cup below it and around it as well. So this very tight margin is sent off real-time to my frozen section lab or the most lab where my most technician processes the, the tissue specimen and after we cut the slides, myself and the most surgeon will look using a microscope to see whether the margins are clear. We do not repair or close the defect until the tumour is all clear and then we do a flap or graft repair or a simple direct closure if the defect is small enough to allow that. So the benefits of most surgery then compared to white excision is that we get superior clearance rates of 99% versus 95% based on the way it's sectioned and the technique because there's real-time margin control before closure is employed. Secondly, because it takes only tiny itty bits each time, you get as tight margin control as possible. And this is absolutely crucial on very cosmetically sensitive areas such as the face. How do I prevent skin cancer living in sunny Singapore? So I think the key number one risk factor for skin cancers would be UV radiation. So UV is not just bad for your skin in terms of photo-aging, creating pigmentation, but it also causes damage to the DNA in your nucleus of the cells. The other thing that's important to note is your skin phototype. So the fairer skin type patients are at greater risk of getting burned and as a result, developing skin cancers than darker skin tone patients. However, it is a misnomer that dark skin tone patients do not develop skin cancers. 
Absolutely, even if you had dark skin tone and you were tan, you can absolutely still develop skin cancer. It is just about a relative risk between the two groups of patients. It's very important to prevent skin cancer, you need to photoprotect. So make sure you slather on enough SPF, especially when you're outdoors in the sunny weather climate like Singapore. Use at least SPF 30 to 50 on exposed areas of your skin. So in today's video, we shared with you how to look out for wearing most A, B, C, D, E is a good um, acronym to remember. How do we sort of diagnose um, cancers? What kind of biopsies we perform and when we can observe them instead? Thirdly, we talk about the treatment options available for the three most common types of skin cancers like the squamous cell carcinomas, basal cell carcinomas and melanomas. Fourthly, we talk about how to prevent skin cancers. Fifthly, who is at risk of skin cancer in our local context. So do remember all the above points that we, we, we talked about in this video. If you want more information, do not forget to follow us on our social media pages. I am Dr. Angeline Yong, consultant dermatologist and dermatological surgeon. I start specialized in the medical and surgical management of skin cancers and I'm a fellowship trained most micrographic surgeon. Thank you.